In order to delve into the standard that states, find the point on a directed line segment between two given points that partitions the segment into a given ratio, we will focus on re the resources available in the state frameworks, specifically Geometry Unit 5. The essential question for this standard is how can a line be partitioned with the evidence of learning being that a student can, in fact, find the point that partitions a directed segment into a given ratio. Within the frameworks, you will see the formula for this standard expressed two ways. There is also a flowchart to demonstrate the path of the process involved to partition a directed segment. Within the frameworks, the New York City Learning Task addresses this standard and utilizes the standards for mathematical practice 1, 2, and 4, which are to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them, to reason abstractly and quantitatively, and to model with mathematics. The following clips highlight student work as they progress through the New York City Learning Task. It's kind of like, like, like using the digits formula, you just gotta like go up and like try to make a, like a right triangle sort of thing. Just count that, and that that could also you you can also use that in your partitioning segment, partitioning a segment formula, because you already know the change in x and the change in y. Or you just you just follow the slope. Which yeah, or you could just count the slope up three, because it's already this slope is split in a formula it's already. I mean, it's perfectly convenient. I mean, you could find it easy. It's like it's always an easier way. Okay, so next, uh, 3, 2, and 5 eighths. You can kind of split this one into two because the slope is three. Oh, and a ratio of one to one. Well, that's simple. What's the ratio? One to one? Well, it goes right here because the slope is three and it, it connects once on one point, so it is four or five. You could just draw a line from the coffee shop to, well, you could first count, the key goes back up two streets, so you can leave that to the side. And you can just draw a line from the coffee shop. From See, the coffee now, shop. Now you two, can use that. No, eight. Emily's apartment. Five, six, eight. Yeah, seven blocks. You just gotta figure out, out how long this is. Okay. Now you use distance formula. Right? Because you. Oh. Because it says, like, the, as the crow flies. It only took them to the end. And you have to use a diagonal, and then you have to find out how long that diagonal line is. Is it a line? Is it a segment? Oh, it's a segment. Yeah, it is a segment. After completing the New York City Learning Task, two students apply what they learned in a problem partitioning a directed line segment. Notice their different approaches. So, the way I do it is A to B. In a ratio of two to three, so then that two over three is going to be two over five. It's going to be split into five um, parts. So A is two negative four right there, and B is seven two right there. And so the way I do it is A, or the X's are five. So two to seven is five. And so five is going to get split into five parts because that's how many parts we need. So then that would be one segment a piece, and then we need two of those. So then A will increase by two because we need one two times to get two increases from A because it's A to B. So then A will, or the X of point Z will be two plus this two to be four. And then Y is the same way, negative four to two is in five, or needs to be split into five. So then that'd be six divided by five would be 1.2. And then uh, we need it again in two parts. So 1.2 times the two is 2.4. So then Z would be, that can't work. So I don't know what I did wrong. Okay, so you got that 2.4, but did you start it somewhere? You said you, because you did the 1.2. Oh, that's right. So it'd be my bet. So then it'd be the negative 4 plus 2.4, and then that'd be 1.6. Yeah, so that'd be negative 1.6 from the 4. About right there. So does that make sense on the picture? So then, yes, it does, because if you compare these two, and you say that this is 2 and that's 3, that's visually looks about right. Yep, good job.
So the ratio is two to three. So to find my numerator, it would be two. And for the denominator, it would be two plus three. So when I plug it in the equation, it will be two over five. Secondly, I need to find the x distance and the y distance. So for the x's, it's two and seven. And for the y's, it's negative four and two. So I'll do, for the y's, I'll do two minus negative four. And the um, negatives cancel out and it becomes six. Then for the x's, I do seven minus two. And that brings me to five. So now, what to find my point, I have to start off with the first point, which is a, two negative four. So I'll go with two plus the fraction times my value, which is my distance. So for x is five. And when I do that, I get four. And for the y, y's, I do negative four plus the fraction, two over five, times the y distance, which is six. When I put that in, I get negative 1.6. So for point C, it's going to be 4, negative 1.6. The two previous examples highlight a key idea for teachers. It is important to allow students to make sense of partitioning for themselves and to allow them to determine their best approach on an individual basis. The student who is more visual can see that this segment needs to be broken into five equal pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, and then has that way to say, well, I need two of those pieces. And they can look at that and see those relationships. They don't necessarily need a specific formula. Other students, even after they've developed a conceptual understanding of partitioning a segment, feel more comfortable relying on the formula and that is a completely valid way for them to approach those problems.